Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to some important theorems and corollaries from calculus. Today we are going to discuss one other corollary of intermediate value theorem or you can say that one result that is you know consequence of uh, intermediate value theorem. So here is the result. You can call this as corollary. So it says that if f of x and g of x are continuous on closed interval a to b with f of a less than g of a and f of b less than g of b ah this greater than you know f of b greater than g of b so this is one either this or this f of a should be greater than g of a and f of b less than g of b this or this you know if this condition is true or this condition is true then there exists C in the interval A to B such that F of C is equal to G of C. Now we can prove this, you know. Let's prove this. Suppose F and G are continuous on A to B closed interval with suppose for the moment first one is old, holding. So if first hold or second hold, so one of them should hold, you know, either one hold or this hold with this, you know, one you know, F of A less than G of A and f of b greater than g of b then we can uh, we will show that there is a there exists a c so i can define a new function h of x equal to f of x minus g of x now you can calculate the value of this new function h on a h of a is equal to f of a minus g of a now you can see that f of a is less than g of a. So f of a is less than you know g of a. So the greater is g of a and the lesser is f of a. So you are subtracting something greater from something lesser. So this must be negative. H of b is equal to f of b minus g of b. So f of b is greater than g of b. So this must be positive. So now you can recall previous result in the previous re video we have seen that if a function has negative value on A and positive value on B or positive value on A and negative value on B then we can find then there is a zero of that function. So there exists C in the interval A to B such that h of c is 0 or you can replace this h of c by f of c minus g of c so f of c minus g of c is 0 or you can say that f of c is equal to g of c so you prove this you can also do the other part so if you consider f of x and g of x continuous on a to b and you now you suppose that this holds so if this holds then again you can repeat this argument the only change will be this h of a will be positive and this h of b will be negative so you can repeat the argument and you can show that if one of these conditions hold along with the continuity of f and g then you can find a c such that these two functions will coincide so this is basically intersection of two uh, graphs so it is you know kind of ensuring the existence of two graphs so now let's let's do that for example f of x is equal to 
x plus 1, let's say g of x is equal to minus x cube minus 1. And we are given with the interval minus 2 to 2. We can see that whether f and g are, you know, intersecting on this interval or not. So, let's see. So let's let's compute this f of a and yeah, f of minus 2 which is minus 1 then you can compute minus g of minus 2 which is going to be uh, plus 8 minus 1 7 you can then compute f of b which is 2 this is 3 and you can compute g of 2 uh, which is minus 8 minus 1 which is minus 9 so you see that f of a or f of minus 2 is less than g of minus 2 but f of 2 is greater than g of 2 so there must exist c in the interval minus 2 to 2 such that f of c is equal to g of c or you can say that uh, c plus 1 is equal to minus c cube minus 1 you can always find a c such that this relation holds so if i you know kind of elaborate this result graphically what is going on basically you have an interval a to b you have two functions f and g let's say this is f and let's say this is g okay so you can see that f of a is less than this g of a and then g of b is less than this f of b so you can see that there must be a value c where these two are equal so this is going on okay fine one more important you know corollary from this intermediate value theorem can be this if f of x is continuous continuous on this interval a to b and has no zeros function is continuous but there are no zeros for this function if this is the case then then either f of x is entirely above x axis on a to b are entirely below below x axis on this interval a to b so this is saying that if you have a function uh, which is continuous on this interval a to b and it has no zeros so it will either be you know entirely above you know like this or it will be you know entirely below because there is no zero and it is continuous so you can use intermediate value theorem and you maybe you know method of contradiction and you can show that uh, a continuous function which has no zero on close interval a continuous function on close interval with no zero on that interval will be entirely either above x-axis or below x-axis uh, for example i can consider this f of x equal to x square plus you know x then this is continuous on this interval let's say 2 to 4 and it has no zero on this interval so i can see this function it will be entirely either above or below you know on this interval so let's plot let me first fix the interval so interval is going to be between 2 
x is going to be between 2 and 4. Let me now write down the function x square plus x. Okay. So that's the function on this interval 2 to 4. So you can see that on this interval 2 to 4, the function is entirely above x axis. Okay. So because it it is continuous and it has no zero on this interval 2 to 4 that's why it's entirely above uh, there can be functions you know which have no zeros and they are continuous so they will be entirely below x-axis these con concepts can be used to answer too many questions and can be you know even used to develop uh, inequalities which are very useful for the analysis perspective thank you